All right, so you're already a Part 61 certificated pilot and you're looking at getting your Part 107 drone license. I've got the video for you. Let's go. Hey everybody, AJ here. And like I said, this video is the process on how to get your drone license if you're already a certificated pilot. It is a little bit different of a process and it is a little bit easier uh, than just getting it normally because you get to skip some things and it's also free. The great part is you can even sit at home and do it in your underwear for the most part. Almost. Stick around to the end to hear some general info, but I'm gonna go over the process first for those of you who are trying to get out of here. You can get your license in just three simple steps. Number one, take an online course. Number two, fill out an IACRA application. And number three, meet with an official to verify your identity. All right, so how exactly do you take the online course? So in order to take this online course, you have to create an account or log in to your existing account on the FAS website or F-A-A-S. Can't remember exactly what it stands for, but it's like, I think it's just Federal Administration Aviation Safety. I don't know, it stands for something. This is the FAA's website that they use to do all sorts of um, online training and online uh, safety recurrent sorts of things. You can also use it um, to complete your uh, ground school requirement for your biannual flight review if you didn't know. So you don't have to go pay an instructor to do it, uh, your hour of ground or, or however long you need. Anyway, that's beside the point. Once you get into this website, you will take the SUAS initial training course. It's a pretty simple course, took me about two hours to do. You watch videos, answer questions. Like I said, sit in your underwear, it's great. Eat a Subway sandwich, you can do that too. I think I did that. Once you pass the course, then you will be given a PDF certificate of your completion. I would recommend to print that off or at least save it digitally uh, because you'll need it later. Now you need to fill out an application on IACRA. IACRA also stands for something. Can you shut up? I'll shoot you. So like I was saying, you gotta fill out an application on IACRA, which also is a fancy big acronym for something that I don't know at this moment. Since you're already a certificate of pilot, you will log in with your, with your existing account and fill out an application almost just like you did for your pilot certificate. This time though, it's a form 8710-13, uh, but actually you just fill out the uh, uh, part 107 SUAS uh, pilot license uh, application. So once you finish that application, and it's mostly just personal information, You'll need your course certificate number, your application number, and your FTN number. Now you're gonna bring all three of those things and go meet an official. What type of official, AJ? Official official. I sound like Dr. Seuss. So the official that you're gonna need to meet can be a variety of different individuals. It can be a certified flight instructor, any old certified flight instructor that is current, um, a designated pilot examiner or a DME. It can also be uh, you can also go to the uh, FISDO office or the FAA standards uh, district office, or you can go to an airman certification representative or an ACR. Now, the simplest one is probably going to be to go to a, a CFI. You can probably call up your local flight school and uh, set up an appointment to do it. Or you can use um, whoever your current CFI is uh, for biannuals or getting your license. So you're gonna go to that person and you are going to give them the before mentioned materials as well as a government issued photo identification card, uh, like a driver's license or a passport. They are going to clickety clack 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 away into IACRA. They're gonna find your application, verify your identity, and uh, approve, your uh, approve your application for uh, submission to the FAA. Once that's done, it's now in the hands of God. I mean, uh, FAA, I mean, zoo, I mean, the FAA. After a good short, while your application will be accepted by the FAA and you will be emailed a uh, confirmation email of your acceptance as well as a digital temporary certificate. So if you're really in a rush to uh, use your new drone license, you can use that temporary certificate um, and have that, uh, you can print that off and have that with you. Then they will send you your permanent certificate in the mail uh, and your temporary one will be invalid after you receive that one. In order to keep your drone license current, you need to every 24 months, go back onto the FAST website and redo that training course. It's not the exact same course though, it's still found on that website, but instead of the, the SUAS initial 
training, it'll be the recurrent training course and it's a little bit more abbreviated. Remember that every t just like a pilot license, every time that you exercise the privileges of your Part 107 certificate, you must have your certificate uh, with you and on hand. Also, in order to use this shortcut rather than uh, doing the other method, which is just for anybody to get their Part 107, really what you're cutting out here is you don't have to go take the exam, which costs $175, which is a really nice benefit. In order to do this whole process, your pilot certificate does have to be current with a current uh, flight biannual flight review. But other than that, everybody, that is pretty much everything. That is how you get your Part 107 drone certificate if you're already a certificated pilot under FAR's Part 61. I will catch you later.